and that comes due to the interesting physics that uh, happens in these uh, defect states which arise from these uh, coordination defects is that essentially they can you know they they pretty much are a master of their own will so they can act both as donor and acceptance they can uh, either hold negative charge or positive charge or no charge and more importantly they can you know hold more than one electron so they can hold zero electron one electron or two electrons right so all of these are things are very difficult to represent in a band structure because in a band structure usually you have one state holding one electron versus now I have these kind of defects in amorphous material which can hold more than one electron so many times people want to avoid this so they they passivate these dangling bonds using uh, things like hydrogen so very common passivation uses uh, take amorphous silicon and uh, passivate these try to passivate these bonds by uh, annealing it with hydrogen so it creates this uh, amorphous silicon it creates the silicon hydrogen bond but it's usually not the strongest of the bonds so when you shine a lot of light on these cells these bonds tend to break and the efficiency of your uh, solar panel degrades so most of the amorphous uh, silicon uh, or you know most of the thin film technology they show a larger degradation when you use them in light so remember that uh, problem set one when you we're calculating that LCOE, calculating you know dollar, uh, kilo cent per kilowatt hour. You took that degradation factor, right? So that degradation factor is much higher for these uh, panels which are made of these uh, thin uh, film materials because these are amorphous materials and these amorphous materials, these bronze will break as you uh, you know as you expose them to light. Okay, so one way to express these uh, energy between these uh, you know since I have these uh, these interesting kind of defects which can hold either zero electron, one electron or two electron. When they hold two electron, I essentially use this term correlation energy which is uh, I've represented by the symbol U to essentially separate out or you know uh, uh, separate out these uh, two states out of uh, one, uh, one of these defects. So what I do is uh, essentially I represent is I uh, have this is one dangling bond, but I represent that uh, using two distributions, and I separate them by this uh, correlation energy, which represents the repulsion between, uh, which would happen if you one of these states would hold two electrons. So I have these two distribution, and I separate them out. They all belong to one state, but I separate them out because it's just you know the in insufficiency of this uh, band diagrams to represent these kind of states. So I have to essentially to due to the limited physics I can uh, represent in this band diagram I represent that uh, one state which can hold multiple carriers I represent that as these two distributions but there's no you know again keep in mind there's no accurate way to represent them it's just I'm inventing physics as I go along to you know to just satisfy my uh, device modeling and to understand these uh, cells better <coughs> So again, I have these tail states. They can be represented. Uh, uh, they could be uh, either uh, valence band. Uh, so the tail states, which are close to the valence band, they're called the valence band tail states. They usually uh, uh, they they can absorb uh, electrons. So these tail states, which are close to the conduction band, uh, they can uh, easily you know absorb electrons. So they act like acceptor. Similarly, the tails, which are the tail states, which are close to the valence band. They can absorb a hole, so they act as donor states. And uh, also, I have this amphoteric states, which uh, arise due to a dangling bond. And many times, I have to you know invent new physics to just to represent them. So, for example, for uh, uh, for a tail states, which uh, which is either a donor or you know has been either a donor or, or an acceptor, you have this one state. So you use this shockley reed hall uh, statistics. To essentially, you know, represent the uh, recombination relation, but uh, when you have uh, a dangling bond, each of them will have two states. So each of these dangling bond can absorb an electron. It can absorb another electron on top of it, right? So I have to invent and or I have to represent that uh, in a new statistics. And uh, many times you see that you know very rich physics being uh, used to you know represent the recombination generation due to these dangling bonds because there's no simple way to do it. Okay, so uh, what I want to impose on you, uh, you know, what I want you, you to take away is that when we talk about these thin film technologies, 
you need to put, you know, throw away your previous hat you have, you have developed studying about the Christian uh, device and, you know, in whatever devices you have studied so far and think of it in a different way. So, you know, things like EK diagram, like crystal momentum has no longer, you know, there's no longer a valid uh, phenomena. So I can just represent this as a function of my density of states as a function of energy, but there's no momentum involved, right? So there's no EK diagram over here. Density of state, thankfully, remains a valid concept. So I remember, remember I told you we need two things, density of state bottleneck and a selective contact. So there's density of state bottleneck available, so you can still make a solar cell out of these. Uh, there's no concept of direct band gap or indirect band gap, and there's no concept of crystal momentum, right? So also this uh, concept of effective mass that people learn uh, in solid state devices, like this is no longer valid. Right. Concept of mobility can still be used, but these mobilities in these materials are much shabby because you have all these defects, right? So you have no perfect crystalline structure. So, for example, mobilities of electrons and holes in a in a amorphous silicon is uh, you know it's ten and two versus you know, hundreds or more than a few hundred in a in a crystalline silicon material. So again, describing the transport becomes complex. It's not easy to dope these materials because you have these stale states and they prevent you doping, reaching very close to the conduction line. So I enter this, you know, into a myriad of these uh, problems, and uh, um, solving each of them is a, you know, is a big uh, research uh, challenge. And uh, so when we come to next class, we'll talk about talking about each of these uh, individual technologies, starting from SIG, then CATL, then amorphous electron. Okay, and uh, you, you want to give the sense now? Or? Yeah. So, people, what is the break? And okay, so you can either, yeah. I mean, if, if you are sure that you can take them without breaking them, you can take them now, or you can just collect them from the lab, and uh, you'll be okay, there. I'm on the lab now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Or if you guys want to walk over to the lab, we can do that. I'm doing that. Okay. All right. So see you on uh, Wednesday. And one more thing. I mean, take a look at the problem set. We will spend. Uh, you don't need to necessarily solve it, but just browse through it. I'll allocate some time on Wednesday to go over it in the class. So I'll keep some time slot free for uh, discussing that. So take a look. It's due next week, but we'll discuss that in class on Wednesday.